here are two wheels and a belt. So wheel A is smaller, has a radius of 10 centimeters. Wheel B, larger, radius of 25. And a belt goes around them so that when you rotate one, you rotate the other. Okay, so they're coupled by a belt. Um, a, wheel A is driven by a motor. So A is being forced, the motor is applying torque on it to accelerate angular acceleration of 1.6 radians per second squared. And the question is, in that case, how long does it take B to reach 100 revolutions per second squared? Okay, so really this is uh, mostly sort of a kinematics problem. Let's look at our sort of um, insight about this problem that we're going to have. And that is, whenever you have a belt between these, if I say something like it doesn't slip, that means the motions of these two things are connected. Okay, so um, uh, due to the belt, they share, let's think about what they share. Any change in arc length here, so say we this turns through some arc length, delta s, that means this point on the belt went to this point on the belt. That means this point on the belt went to that point on the belt. That means this point on the belt went to that point on the belt. They share delta s. If in some time this goes through some arc length along the surface, this goes through the same arc length along the surface, and therefore if we take a derivative, the same thing is true. Okay. So the derivative of delta s, or of a, a little arc length, is the tangential velocity. Uh, did you think omega? That's the derivative of theta. Right? But that theta is not the same, because because they have different circumferences. It's this little arc length, the belt, makes the tangential properties the same. So they share Vt, and they also share the same tangential acceleration. If they're speeding up and the belt along the tangential direction is accelerating, then it's the same. Again, for the same reason. Whatever happens on the belt happens the same everywhere. So that's the main thing you have to realize um, to do these problems. So then we have our strategy. So even though you know that now, what are you going to do? So let's see, we were asked how long for this one to get to 100 revolutions per second. So we're probably uh, looking for its angular acceleration. We were given this one's angular acceleration. So what we got to do is go from alpha of A to tangential quantities, acceleration tangential of A, and then that will get us to alpha of B. Just got to go from one to the other. And you just do that with the radius of the disks, right? So let's start. Let's say alpha of A, um, 1.6 radians per second squared equals, and we think, how did that relationship go? What is it? Let's see, I know that S equals theta R, so I take a derivative, and I know that VT is omega R, and I take a derivative, and I know that AT is alpha R. If you memorize those or be able to do that again real quick. Because what this tells us is that if we're given alpha, we know it's equal to at over r. Or in this case, well in this case we're looking for at. So let me write it a little different. We're looking for the tangential acceleration over here. So it's equal to alpha 1.6 times r. So on this disk, that's 0.1 meters. So the tangential acceleration in meters per second squared along this belt is 0.16 meters per second squared. Yeah. 0.16. So here it's going 0.16 meters per second squared, here it's going 0.16 meters per second squared, and here it's going 0.16 meters per second squared. So on B, we apply the same equation. We say the uh, 0.16 meters per second squared is the angular acceleration of B times 0.25 meters in that radius. So you can see we're really just doing a ratio, ratioing the 10 centimeters and the 25 centimeters. Now uh, we solve that for alpha B and blah blah blah, you get 0.64 radians per second squared. Alright, so that is smaller. And that makes sense. This is a smaller wheel. If the edges are going the same speed, this one isn't going to be rotating as fast. So 0.64 radians per second squared. And now I forgot what we were doing. We want to know how long for it to reach um, 100 revolutions per second. 
So that's kinematics, right? That's angular kinematics. And we think, well, let's see, what were the big angular, the big kinematics equations are that theta final equals theta initial plus omega not t plus one half alpha t squared. That's the angular version of the constant acceleration kinematics. So we do have constant acceleration here. That's not what we want, because we're talking about the change in the angular velocity, right? From rest from zero to 100, we need the other one, omega final, the simpler one. Omega final equals omega initial plus acceleration times time. So we want our omega final would be 100 revolutions per second. We need that in radians per second, so our revolution is 2 pi radians, so it's 100 times 2 pi per second. Right? So that would be 100 times 2 pi, so that's omega final in radians per second. Every revolution is 2 pi, so 100 of them is 100 times 2 pi. Equals omega initial, which is 0, because we started at rest. Uh, rest plus 0.64 times t. So 100 times 2 pi over 6, 0.64, and you get 982 seconds. Well, there you go. It's now a race at Dupont.